one of the biggest challenges in quantitative finance is research. For about past two, three videos, and I admit I've not been very consistent, I think I've missed, I've talked about how to do market research. And I've talked about how to build AI agents using market research, which is this video, which was posted 13 days. Then I talked about a framework called QLib, which is like, you know, kind of the starting point for the framework that I've taken to go deep dive in. And then talked about a derivative, which is an RD agent. RD is re really research and development AI agent. So the thought is that we move forward the journey and go more from high level to more deep. So this video is going to be about 10 minutes long or so. Please be the conversation. Uh, I think you'll learn a lot if you go it slow. If you have not watched the previous set of videos, suggest you start at QLib, then look at RD agent and then come back to this video. This is not to give me a view count or anything, but uh, so that you get the whole context. The goal is how to automate your research. And if you spend probably two hours of worth of watching content, and follow through, you will be able to automate this for yourself as well. All right, let's dive in. So uh, this is the framework which is uh, provided by Microsoft. It's called uh, QLib and QLib really stands for quantitative library. It's an AI oriented quantitative investment platform. Uh, and this is surprisingly very complete. I've been looking for frameworks like this for a long time and this framework uh, slash library from Microsoft ticks most of the brackets which I was looking for. It is grounded in finance most importantly. Uh, it has been maintained for a very long period of time. I think if you actually go and look at how long this library has been around, you'll see that a lot of code has been for years if not uh, weeks and months. So they have been, uh, you know, a couple of years in the making, uh, which is a good thing, which is actually a great thing for a quantitative finance library. Then comes the problem of uh, maintenance and given that this is by Microsoft, uh, it's being very nicely maintained. So that's a little bit of background. Uh, this is the RD agent problem that I was talking about. And I've, I've touched all of this, like the outline in the previous video, starting from the research paper. Now this video is going slightly more deeper. So we'll go through documentation and try and talk about what is this framework about how to get started, uh, see the data part. There's certain things that we need to learn and understand before we actually install and start to use. So it will be uh, maybe one more video which will be overview and then uh, we'll go and understand it. So if you just go through this diagram and see, there are certain layers. The bottom layer is infrastructure. Then there is a learning framework layer which has all of the supervised learning, reinforcement learning, etc., etc. And then you have a multi-level workflow layer where your uh, all of those good stuff like strategy sets, uh, some of your decision systems can set. And if you have built some kind of a forecasting model, your risk models, anything like that, or even RL based strategies, those things set. <clears throat> and finally, there's some sort of an interface, which is, I think they, they, they provide some sort of charts and plots. Let's see where it is. It should be somewhere here. Uh, yeah, these kind of charts and plots. Again, uh, we are not going to charts and plots today, just going through the over outline. So this is the infrastructure layer, which is data trainer model. There's all the learning frameworks, there's multi-level workflows, there's analysis, all of that. The way this system is working it, it consists of different layers and infrastructure layer provides the underlying support. If you go by definition, it has certain components called data layer, which is kind of very straightforward helps you provide the infrastructure to manage and retrieve raw data and we'll double click on that very shortly. Trainer provides you uh, the ability to control algorithms either custom or even auto ML is available as you can see in the box. Model manager is you'll need different sort of as you go through evaluation cycles different models experiments will want to have managing the model. And then there's certain components, which is uh, development module in development, uh, like basically they've given a layer. Learning for a uh, framework layer, which is the second layer is the forecast and the trading agents are traded are trainable, which really means is uh, they are trained on the learning framework layer. So the whole idea being that they have pre-packaged certain uh, scenarios as workflows, and you can provide your own inputs and work with them. And then uh, there's other categories of learning, which I'm not going to go into like reinforcement learning supervised. 
so this was sorry this was the learning framework layer and then there is the workflow layer which covers the whole of quantitative investment so now that you have data now that you have infrastructure now that you have model uh, you want to really put that to test so uh, be it whatever form of strategy uh, you go through the information extraction process you focus on different scenarios generation of signals and all of that and you know all of these uh, signals can be fed into a decision module which then generates the trading decisions and all of that so it's a well thought of uh, framework i would say and oh, eventually on top of it you have an interface layer which is a user friendly interface like uh, all of this uh, some of them are existing some of them are more like uh, hand drawn so like under development etc etc when you go back to the library one of the first things that you should notice is uh data i think if you look for the word chinese it's easier to search uh no not china or uh, china yeah so the data sets play a very important role in quant and uh, there are two data sets pre packaged it's basically us market alpha 360 and alpha 158 uh you can actually go ahead and build your own which is what i'm going to try and do so you can have formulaic alphas like different sort of uh data sets that you can create given your certain com uh, i would say different different sort of markets that you probably operate under uh, whether you do let's say i don't know options futures currency anything commodities whatever and then you'll have to uh, work with the different data api and all of that so the data layer which i talked about uh, going back to here this layer is what we are essentially touching now why because this is where you'll have to start so when we do installation the first thing is we'll have to go here and do here do things here this layer offers you all the abilities that you need it offers prep apis to handle load cache all of the data so it's as a certain data structure format you will have to learn through this which is described in the paper and uh, they basically just work with this approach to uh, feed the data into the system i think that's what they, it does there is a converter code as well like if you have your own csv data but uh, you can pass through this sort of a script uh, and convert it into a format which qlib understands they also have a they can consume csv but csv has a needs to have a certain structure and all of that so this is the point where you uh, have to start uh, because given indian markets i'm not too sure how the data uh, part has been designed here and once you take care of the data framework right you are you are kind of good to start so you can look at any of these main components that have been listed here for instance let's say a workflow management so you go to workflow and the entire workflow can be looked at you know you have the data which we have just briefly touched upon then model then evaluation and then you have different sorts of example if you read this example this is a very declarative style declarative style ka matlab hota hai that uh, sometimes you write code in python this might sound a lot of complicated stuff but it really is not if you are into Uh, a journey for a couple of years of automating your trades and automating certain crucial parts as research this this is very straightforward if you take time to digest it so don't rush through it loop back the video or just throw the video out and just go through the documentation so what it is trying to do by showing this example is run a simple workflow so there's a provider url which is the data that already we just talked this goes to certain regions specify certain very simple parameters like market hai what is the benchmark start time and time fitness start time some configuration as to you know what is the strategy uh, i don't know what this is this is like a dropout strategy uh, something like a portfolio management st- strategy this is something like a uh, i don't know what this is and there are there are certain parameters that you are doing you specify the back testing thresholds specify the task so the task within the task you have you're using the model like gbm and you are describing all the parameters for it you have the data set that you have given so all of this is the entire flow from the data to the model all of that the best part is if you understand the framework all you have to do is write this and when you say uh, just q run configuration.yaml and yaml is just a declaration it's like a sample output 
So all of this would run and uh, initialize and automatically move forward and you would essentially be able to end into a result state which basically is similar to the charts that we saw on the website. So if I flip back to the GitHub, I'll show you somewhere how they're running. Uh, yeah, so you see this. So this is a workflow that we just briefly touched. Again, briefly I'm repeating, we're just talking 10 minutes here. Uh, the workflow that we created, we pulled the data, we said we'll go and define in a workflow, we did that and then we called that workflow as a YAML. So the moment you do this, all of the results of analysis would come out. Uh, the documentation is here and this is sort of the graphical report you will get. The benefit is the once the framework is stitched up and running, uh, one of the things which I'm thinking is uh, putting this framework out and uh, making this as a platform if you are interested in uh, joining hands there or uh, you know if you think this framework could be useful for you just drop me a comment uh, and this looks like a pretty strong starting point so again back to the what i was talking is once you have finished doing all of this you can get all the results assessments parameters basically the analysis part is completely automated uh, they also have given some sort of evaluation and result analysis and then you can just basis what you have run you can quickly say that uh, use python and get some graphical reports like this or uh, change even parameters in here all of these are customizable everything here is customizable so uh, that's probably where i would want to park so uh, what i've talked about i repeat is uh, you start with the framework you try and understand a little bit more in the framework uh, start from introduction section don't be overwhelmed by all of this you have to look at the data part start here because uh, i think this some setup that needs to happen for the data because i'm pretty sure this does this has been the whole standard stuff that they offer out of the box is tuned for us markets and china data i am not 100 percent. i could be wrong but i'm gonna play it out in the future videos and see how we go all right so if you're liking this series on qlib put a comment if you're not well still put a comment uh join the whatsapp community for quant lab and uh, yeah support my work thank you for listening bye bye